We need sketches for various purposes like we use them for reference sometimes for as profile sketches or guide curves. So to create any sketch you can use this toolbar sketcher. I can click on this button sketch or you can as it is a workbench you can also access that through start mechanical design and then sketcher. So to create any sketch we first need a planar element let it be a surface element or a plane. So we'll select a plane and here we are in the sketcher workbench. Uh, your UI may be quite different from this one. This is because I have arranged these toolbars as per my preferences. So uh, this is the this is the grid. If you don't want to visualize this grid, you can turn it off using the sketch tools toolbar. Here you can find the grid option uh, on off toggle option. Okay, this is the important toolbar which is called profile. You can see this command profile over here. By this command, you can draw vertical line, horizontal line, an inclined line. You can switch to any curve mode, curvature mode, like to this tangent arc option, like this. You can again switch to line mode over here, like this. To turn it off, uh, you, you should click on the command again. This is the line command. By this command you can simply draw lines. You don't have any option to switch to curvature. If you want to, like you, uh, right now you, if you have seen, I, create, I, I clicked on this command, I created a line and I, I got exited through the command. But if I still want to be in that command to draw any another line, I should double click on the command. So I am, so after creating this line, I can still connect or uh, create any other line. I am not out of the command yet. To come out of the command, I will simply click on the command again. Okay. To delete, you have window selection by a mouse and then press delete button from the keyboard. Another option is uh, rectangle. This simple rectangle you have to enter. You, have, you, you can use mouse cursor to select the first corner point and then second corner point, and use the rectangle. There is one more uh, you know, option, useful option, which is centered rectangle. You need to use the mouse button, mouse click to set the center of the rectangle, and then drag the mouse to have the rectangle. The sides of this rectangle are uh, symmetrical about this center point. To draw circle, you have this option. Simple, you simply you set this circle. Uh, you click off for the center of the circle, and then if you drag, you can have desired radius of the circle. There, similarly, there are other options like three-point circle, three-point arc. Uh, this is simple arc. You have to. This is you are giving the center, and then you are specifying the radius and the first point, and then the second point. This is how you can create arc. I'll see this spline command. You have to have some points. You have to set the points, and the curvature will be automatically taken. Then, after coming out of the command, you can play with the curvature by simply dragging the points, control points, controlling points. This is the axis. This is used for a mostly construction purpose. This won't be in the sketch. If you come out of the sketch, you won't be able to see this construction element. One more thing: if you have these are the standard elements, you can convert. You, they will appear if you come out of the sketch, and they will affect in the 3D commands. You can convert these elements into construction elements by clicking on this toggle option, construction standard element. So now it is converted into construction element. If you want to come convert it back to standard element, you need to pick that and then click on this button again. So it is now the standard element again. You can create points using this option. This is simple points. Just pick, uh, click anywhere in the graphic space. Now we'll see the important command which is constraint. Suppose you want to constrain these points, you need to select the point and then click on this option. Select the axis. Okay, here we go. You can edit this dimension. This is a dimensional constraint. You can edit this dimensional constraint later on by double clicking on it. So um, let's make a profile first. 
I'm randomly creating something. Okay, so if you see uh, some constraints are automatically created, I can delete them. So now this is a white sketch that means it is not, it is either not constrained or partially constrained. However, they are automatically created some constraints that like, like this is vertical line, this is horizontal line, these are automatically created. So it is, it can, we, can, we can say that this is this sketch is partially constrained. Now uh, it is always advisable as it is justifiable that you should have a, a completely or fully constrained sketch. It will, uh, 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 if you see uh, this, uh, this sketch can be moved in any direction. That means its degrees of it, it is free f with some degrees of freedom. So constraining is nothing but locking the degrees of freedom. So we'll one by one we will constrain this sketch. Uh, right now, if you see, this can be moved in horizontal direction. So I can constrain that direction by giving it a dimensional constraint. Let's keep it as 275. So now it won't move in the up and down directions. However, it still can move in the horizontal direction this element so I can constrain that as well first let's give the overall length of the object these are the dimensional constraint uh, I'll see how we can give geometric constraint suppose I want these two elements to be uh, symmetric about this y axis then I will select these elements then this, this element and then this element and then I will click on this option constraints defined in a dialog box here I can see the symmetry option if I check this option then these two lines are now symmetric about this axis I could also do that I am right now I will cancel this uh, let me show you that I can also do that using this com constraint command for that purpose I will select this command I will pick this element first then this element and at this point I will right click and I will, ha I will find this option allow symmetry line now I will select this line this axis so it's the same effect these two elements are now symmetric with this y axis so these are uh, this is kind this is kind of geometric uh, constraint there are some other options as well let's give radius to this uh, thing i can also choose diameter option this is a drop down menu let's keep it as radius 25 mm radius Uh, let's make this uh, let's give this dimension as 200 this is inclined line let me make it horizontal uh, I could make I could select this line and then select these options constant divine and dialog box and make it horizontal or also I am right now I will cancel this let me show you another way I can also use the same option constraint and then pick this end point and then this end point and on the right clicking I have some other options like vertical distance major dis direction if I select this one I have this option I have this dimension I can make it zero so now it is again the same effect it is horizontal let's make it horizontal with this method okay to give angular constraint which is again dimensional constraint I'll select this line and then this line this is the angle let me make it 30 and now this line and let's say this line it is it is 75 so now it seems that the sketch is fully constrained and also uh, as it is green completely green also you can cannot move any of the elements so that means that it is perfectly uh, uh, fully constrained now if I try to apply any other constraints like this if I if I'm making try to make these uh, this la this point as well as this line to be coincident I cannot make it because it is already constrained so I need to delete some of the constraints Okay, now we'll see 
the uh, other options like these operations uh, toolbar by the corner I can give fillet I can edit the fillet radius this is chamfer I can edit the chamfer dimensions as well this is chamfer length this is chamfer angle uh, this is the trimming this is used for trimming uh, let me extend this toolbar relimitations and uh, let's in a draw a line by using quick trim I can simply edit, uh, delete the extended parts extended elements like this quick trim will quickly delete uh, these elements by trimming this the element which are in between these two lines this is a, a quick trim this was quick trim and this is normal trim so by this uh, option I can extend as well as trim something so as as you see I have extended this line as well as I could trim this this portion uh, I can trim either sides whichever side I pick it will be there and another side will be trimmed similarly I will use this option to trim this line no, I have complete, completely separated this portion from this portion this portion I can delete from window selection so here we go so this was trim now you see some more options uh, this is regarding transformations this is mirror option before that let me tell you about the uh, symmetry so if I want this entire sketch to be mirrored however I don't want the original one I can use the symmetry option I need to I am making the window selection after clicking on this symmetry button and then I will select this horizontal axis so the original sketch is gone and this is just mirrored now if I want the original sketch to be there as well as the new sketch to be mirrored I can use this mirror but, uh, command I have first I have selected the sketch you could also select it later on after clicking on this command however let me tell you uh, uh, let me do that that I have already selected the elements and now I am clicking on this command now I have to select this mirroring element uh, mirroring axis and here we go this is the mirrored sketch this is the offset sketch you can select the line any element and by dragging the mouse you can place the element anywhere you want the dimensional constraint will automatically appear you can edit that later so it, that means you are uh, giving the offset distance later on after offsetting so uh, there is one more thing uh, let me show you suppose uh, somehow you created a sketch and you have this open ending but you are not able to see that as it is very small opening and you have not zoom uh, you know you have not uh, zoom enough so in such case and if you exit the sketch and if you try to perform any 3d command uh, with this sketch that may not be proper so in this case you can in such case you can use this tool and then sketch analysis uh, then you will have status of this sketches so there are two loops one is closed this one is closed it is highlighted however this one is not closed this is because there is some opening that we intentionally kept however uh, as you are not able to see that opening you can right click and then click on reframe on it will zoom the graphics to that place where there is the opening now that opening you can easily close like this and then if you check again you will see that it is now closed so this is sketch analysis this is the button for exiting the workbench this is as this is a sketcher workbench on exiting you will be uh, we will go back to the earlier workbench and I'm back to the part design workbench there's one more uh, option this is position sketch the earlier like this sketch was made using this normal sketch which is also known as slide sketch and this is another option which is position sketch a position sketch I have some more options like in the earlier sketch I had to select only the reference element and the orientation was automatically taken 
However, now I can select the reference as well as the uh, the other parameters like the orientation, the origin. So if I had any other point on the on the plane, I could select that as the origin. Uh, and and the orientation I can change. I can reverse the horizontal axis like this. I can reverse the vertical axis as well. I can swap this, swap them like this. If I click on OK, this is the normal sketching. And if I exit, you see, uh, this is how the icon looks like. This is for position sketch and this position sketch and this is for normal sketch. Uh, there's one more thing uh, that I would like to tell you. Uh, let's open a part. This is a part. Let's I want to let's uh, say that I want to create a sketch. Uh, I want to create a sketch in the middle of this part. So I'm creating a plane in between the part. This is my this will be my sketch plane. So I'll select this plane as as a reference plane for, for my sketch. Now, uh, as it is in between this part, if I want to see the inside of the part, I could use this option, cut part by sketch plane. So now it has dynamically cut the part. You can see this uh, inside of the part. Now, suppose I want to use the curvature of this part. Suppose uh, let it be anything complex like a spline uh, element, spline surface or, or spline part. Um, you can project that spline part uh, by the intersection of the sketch plane using this project command project 3d element I just need to select the project uh, the element that I need to project and it will be there it's yellow in color so it's it is uh, as it is projected so if you exit the sketch if you hide the part you'll see the sketch this is as per the 3d element so this was all about the Sketcher Workbench.